All right, it's been an entire week, Greg, since I've last seen you, and uh, how has it been? It's been quiet, which is to say how everything's going. Um, it's looking like maybe we're starting to see some good re- uh, results in beating back uh, the uh, miniature menace, but let's see how the next couple of weeks go out. Maybe we, we can start getting more substantial uh, news on sports starting to return we'll get into some proposals on that in a bit but we do have some unfortunate breaking news that we have to get into yeah um so as we didn't have our episode last week because it was just completely dead in the sports news uh but the week before i had told you of my obsession with trevor bauer and you know i've had obsessions before uh which is why i don't drink smoke or do drugs because college, I was addicted to pear-flavored applesauce for a while. I've been addicted to mac and cheese. Last month was Trevor Bauer. The past two weeks was British television. And this week, my obsession, frozen Oreos. Uh, Fro- frozen Oreos. Frozen Oreos, they're delicious. Um, I totally recommend it. We're not sponsored by Oreos or Nabisco, but uh, they're delicious. Um, but... On a sour note, though, uh, we Yeah, I was going to say, that's not the uh, unfortunate news I was talking about. (laughs) Yes. um, The unfortunate news, though, uh, not my Oreo addiction, uh, but we have lost another life, uh, although not COVID-related, but uh, Hank Steinbrenner, the eldest of the brothers of the Steinbrenner family, uh, has died, Uh, so... Well, Hal is more of, like, sort of the face. I mean, Hank was still there. Hank was the face from 2006 uh, to, uh, in the 2007 and uh, 2008 seasons, he was the public voice before uh, putting his younger brother Hal in charge Mm -hmm. in 2008. Now, as Joe said, this is not a uh, uh, coronavirus-related death. Uh, Hal, who was 63, was a... uh, well-known chain smoker and had long battling health issues so this was just the uh, culmination in a long battle and honestly when uh i even though they said he reluctantly gave up uh some of uh the control that that he was reluctant to be in control of the team and that's why he gave gave uh his younger brother hal the head in charge who knows, maybe he did have some health issues at the time back then and said, I can't really be in charge of the team at the moment. Yeah, a lot well, of people not, said Hank know, was but... more like a mini George in his demeanor. Uh, uh, now, since I, I, I didn't really, like I watched baseball as a kid, but uh, I didn't really get more and more into it until like really uh, when Hal sort of took over. Um, as I got like really into it. So I got a little more accustomed to Hal and uh, his sort of a lot nicer demeanor compared to George and Hank. Uh, He sort of like seemed to at least listen a little bit more and not spend everything and jump on everything. Um, Yeah. But I think we need to bring that back because I need a World Series and I need one now. Yeah, and this was supposed to be the year. Yeah. But, well, uh, may, maybe 2017, uh, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, we still have a, a, we have a few grievances on that one that we've gone over. Yeah. But, so, uh, yeah, speaking of uh, what's happening this year. Yeah, we don't know exactly what's happening as of right now. Um, some of the news is, uh, baseball players are going to be tested eventually, uh, to see if they've had it. They've been, they're going to be in like some sort of like worldwide study or something. They're going to draw blood. Apparently that's not going to go into any drug testing, but just to see like how it affected people who might not have shown some symptoms. Mm. Uh, so I think that's supposed to roll out soon and it's like a 10 minute wait procedure. You just like prick the finger, uh, So that's not, like, too exciting. But what is exciting, though, is a possible realignment. And usually that only happens when you get new teams or you want to send the Astros from the National League to the American League to make it 15-15 and instead of 
16 and 14. And or if you're the commissioner and decide you want to move your che- your team unilaterally to the National League, a la Bud Selig and the Brewers. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this one's got a little reformatting going on. Uh, do you want to start this one off? Sure. Now, this is one of several, several proposals that MLB is currently going through to determine what the heck is going to happen if slash when a season in 2020 is cleared to uh, to start off. We had a proposal a few days before this one, uh, actually, that had everything, everyone being uh, thrown into Arizona and waiting it out there uh, in empty stadiums until they're clear to go back. Now, this second proposal is a lot more radical because it it has two major components. One is it it throws everyone back into their spring training uh, facilities. And two, and the big biggest one, a radical temporary realignment based on the, on the spring training uh, ground. So the Cactus League, will, ha- they will all 15 teams will only face uh, the Cactus League teams, and Grapefruit League will only face Grapefruit League teams, and more so... They'll lump in American League and National League teams together. So, for example, in the Grapefruit League North, you have the New York Yankees, the Philadelphia Phillies, the Toronto Blue Jays, the Detroit Tigers, and the Pittsburgh Pirates, which is to be interesting to say the least. Needless to say, there would be a universal DH in place. I don't see how they would keep traditional American League, National League uh, rules in place if they're going to just lump everyone together. It's yeah, because if you're a team like... Because if you're a team like, uh, say, the Rangers, who specifically get a designated hitter, it's like, hey, I mean, this is who I am. I mean, you, you, Joey Gallo is going to be playing, maybe, as a DH from time to time. Uh, yeah. you, you're going to have to have that as a DH. You can't take that away from yeah. the Rangers. Yeah, and meanwhile the Mets get get a break and you can just stick Robbins and Cano or uh, Wilson Ramos in the DH yeah. spot and not have to worry about throwing them in the field as their bodies break down. Yeah, um, and then you sort of get the pitchers are, I guess, a little bit more safe. Um, I know Barto, Bartolo Colon would definitely agree to all yeah. DHs. He hated batting. <laughs> yeah, meanwhile Madison Bum- Bumgarner is going to throw a fit. Yeah. Because... They, he, when he signed with the Diamondbacks, they made note of the fact that he can hit. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I, I don't think there's anything against the rules saying you, you can't use a DH. So if Bumgarner wants to hit, I mean, oh, the D-backs will say, all right, he can hit. There have been, uh, there have been teams in spring training that's, that like, uh, uh, National League teams that say, hey, hey, our pitcher needs to get some batting practice in. We were seeing that near the end near the time before they paused spring training that some pitchers were saying, hey, I need to get some bats in. Yep. I need to get some of my bats for the season. Uh, uh, speaking, though, of uh, just a tangent a little bit, one of my other obsessions this past week has been following uh, something off Pinstripe Alley. Apparently, someone decided to hack into the game and make Eduardo Nunez, like, perfect stats and everything where he's thrown, like, three perfect games – uh, <laughs> thrown like five no hitters, struck out a whole twenty seven batters in one game with one hit batter. But he's like leading the league in like hits, slugging on base, triples. Uh, it's, so I mean, that's another pitcher and hitter right there for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, what, what what does it really come down to that we're like being obsessed now with simulated versions of games? I mean, yesterday you had the finals of the. NFL Madden goat of all time simulation where the Packers beat the Patriots, thank God. Like, why did I care about that? Like, I don't know what it's... Because there's nothing to. else. There's nothing it's, else going on. It's just so sad. Yeah, speaking of simulations, the uh, CBS Sports uh, ran a simulation in Out of the Park Baseball about what this proposal could do, and uh, they did it based on a shortened season... And ironically enough, a traditional American League National League uh, World Series came about. Uh, but while the Yankees expected to be there, that's no problem. The Padres was the other team in the World Series, and and they took a three-two lead 
before the Yankees rallied back to take uh, best of seven. Really? The Padres? I didn't see that. They they would benefit a lot from a shortened season, among other other teams. You kidding me? Yeah, yeah with, I guess. The White Sox would as well. If the shorter a season is, the more you can get a flash in the pan type. Yeah. Uh, start. Remember, uh, last uh, last year that the that the Pirates were were five hundred team and could have easily contended uh, coming out of the All Star break before they just completely melted down. So well, ima- imagine if they were right in a wild card mix. They couldn't well, get well, in just from that um, alone. I think it was like four or five years ago. The Giants had like the best, the second best record heading into the All Star break. And then they just like forgot how to win games, and they ended up like I think getting that last wild card spot, and I think it might have been twenty sixteen, but they ended up not doing that even year magic though that year. Um, so I mean, if you're doing short game, I mean anything can happen. I mean we saw that when uh, the Cubs won the World Series. I mean Chapman knew he only had to pitch another like ten more games. So I mean why use them? Yeah. Why, just do what you can. In a short amount of time, I mean, it's less work on the arms. Um, so, uh, yeah. but one of the other interesting things I did see about a possible proposal for MLB was doing games in Japan. That was one option I had yeah. seen. I um, see. I see that as not likely. A because Japan has its own baseball season to go with, and B they're starting to see a an uptick in cases at the moment. They just had to pause their spring training for a second time again. So yeah. if they can't get their own league off off the ground, I don't see them hosting American League talent. Yeah, it, it didn't seem like it, but people were just sort of talking about it just as like, hey, maybe if Japan finishes their virus situation first, and they had said like uh, one set of the teams, NPO would have like the mornings or something, and then MLB would have at night or the other way around. Um so I mean, I mean, it's plausible, but at the same time, probably not the best option. Yeah, probably um, what what will actually happen is a proposal we haven't heard because this proposal, the Arizona proposal, or just among several things that are that they're floating around. This, these are just the two that leaked out. Now, if you want my take on it, I do not like the Grapefruit League stuff because uh, yeah, that no. mainly because by I know that they change the leagues out of necessity, but how much do you change the game to get it playing that it cheapens the end result? That it makes a World Series trophy mean less than others? Now, there was, there was uh, back in 1981, the shortest season ever because of a player strike. Most teams played about 106 games. And they had, that that's the lowest number ever played in a season. Not even the strike shooting season of 94 had less. Now, this year might have less. This simulation that they went went through had about 75, 80 games. Now, personally, if that's what they go for, for I don't like it. You need to play at least half a, se- half a season, preferably try to get around the 90, 100 game mark. And you need to keep the traditional rivalries intact now how you do you do that uh, with the current situation i don't i'm not sure they they probably have some contingent some plans that involve more traveling and ultimately in the biggest thing that i go against it what happens if these plans have them staying through the whole season in these places and then moving to a neutral site for the playoffs what happens if by july August, it's at a point where most things are reopened and they could realistically move teams back to their home cities. Will they do that? Will they keep them in spring training? Deny the fans? I mean, granted, it'd be you'd be hard-pressed to probably find some fans to go immediately back to games, but eventually they want to. Yeah, I mean, this there, is... There's just, it sounds like a very raw proposal that, while it could work... I don't like the uh, end results. And then ultimately the biggest thing is who's to say after this season when they bring back traditional things that they just say, you know what, we're going to keep the DH in the National League. We're going to keep the electronic umpires. We're going to keep the these stuff. 
Who's to say that they won't keep some of this stuff that fans might not like? I mean, I think they should just keep the DH in the National League anyway. Uh, Boo this man. Boo this man. Um, I, I just think that just <laughs> makes that easier. Um, I'm sorry, but I like seeing a, pit, a pitcher do something very well. I mean, remember the Brewers in the uh, postseason where they got that that big home run off of, I think, with, uh, I think it was Brent Suter. And then there's Michael Lorenzen, there's um, there's uh, Madison Bumgarner, there's there's other pitchers that you just love like to see hit. I mean, you don't see them hit a lot, but... No, I mean, Zach Greinke had that one really, really good year a few years back. Um, but on my desk, uh, and you haven't really been in my room too often. Uh, yeah, especially but, not in recent months. Yeah, um, but on my desk I've got like... 15 baseball cards in those like hard plastic sleeves Mm -hmm. and one of those hard plastic sleeves is a yankee pitcher whom you you probably remember chin ming long Uh uh-huh yeah um what happened he was rounding bases hurt his foot and was never the same so i've been very salty about that since then because he was one of my favorite pitchers of course naturally one of my favorites ends up not happening anymore I mean, if it if it's not the leg, it could be the arm. You're, if you're preventing one one thing, it's mm-hmm. just shifting the focus onto another. Yeah. So I, I'm anyway, just not a fan of that. Yeah. Um, We've been yeah, talking so, a lot a lot about baseball. What about uh, some of the other sports? Like, what's the NBA doing? What's the NHL doing? They were right in the playoff hunts, as yeah. they had to cancel. Yeah. So uh, what we have with the NBA, I mean. Uh, they're not, I don't know, like the Chinese Basketball Association, um, not that it's the NBA, but they're going to push stuff back not until like July. Uh, the regular NBA probably won't do much of that until then either. Um, so it's just, everything's just being pushed back at this point. Um, the NHL has had its talks of they're they're not even really sure of it. I mean, uh, yeah, it sounds like if if you had one or the other, that NHL was more likely to can the rest of the season and go to the straight to the playoffs than the NBA is. See, I, honestly, I think the NBA should can the rest of the season and just go to the playoffs because as we had talked last time, the NBA, anyone really below the sixth seed, isn't really that good or gonna really make a difference uh, in the playoffs. Uh, it's so if, there, if there's a team that's that ninth or tenth seed with ten games to go, trying to make that eight seed, uh, th- they're not really going to make a difference in that playoff. Sure, it's good as we had talked about getting your team into the playoffs and getting that fan base to be there and hope for the best and be like, hey, you know, maybe we we made the playoffs, maybe we won't fire that head coach and see what happens. Sure, there's that aspect, but if you want to talk about it on a competitive field and uh, what's really going to matter at the end of the day, uh, it's really not going to matter who's going to be there. Uh, You're probably not going to have a number eight seed upset a number one seed or a seven upset a number two in the NBA. NBA should just cut it and go straight to the playoffs. The NHL, on the other hand, and yes, I am a New York Rangers fan, and they're like four points back out of the playoffs with like 12 games to go. They would have to go like nine and three ish in order to make it to the playoffs, and most of their players will now be healthy. Uh, considering Kreider's broken leg will be better by now. Um, it, it's just there's too many components in a hockey team that can help make that number eight seed beat a number one. Uh, so it's very possible in the NHL for that team that's on the brink trying to get that last wild card spot to go and upend a number one. So I think the NHL needs to finish that season, let those last couple teams fight it out, and especially with like how tight the NHL is, too, in the standings. I mean, the Metropolitan, I mean, there's just like a couple points separating that number like one and four seed. So uh, that could easily make big, big turns in that. Um Again, it's it's you can't just think about this though as just a purely sports thing. You also have to think of what it means for the ci- all the cities to have their teams back playing. Remember back two thousand one after the uh, the pause for nine eleven by MLB. One of the biggest moments 
the first game back in New York with the Mets, uh, Mike Piazza's uh, um, emotional home run. The Mets were on the outside looking in. They were they were close, but they were they had a very much uphill battle to try to get into the playoffs, and they ultimately did not. Now, would you like if there was something as serious uh, where they had to cancel the rest of the season and go straight to the playoffs? Uh, Piazza would never have that moment in history, and who's to say that uh, uh, someone in the N- the uh, NBA or the NHL would not get that chance to bring some emotional uplifting to towns and cities that really, really need something good to hold on to? No, I'm, I'm not opposed to that, and I understand that point of the view. I'm just talking about if you, you need to cut games or something uh, I, I think that's just an option for the NBA uh, you, you can cut the rest of that season and go there now they can extend a little bit more into the summer than they normally do mostly because the 2020 Olympics has now been rescheduled for next year so especially for the NHL that has to deal with NBC to air games which is supposed to host the Olympics this year uh, with that missing now, the NHL can sort of move down and take those time slots that would have normally been used for the for NBC for the Olympics. Uh, so the NHL has sort of at least television time yeah. to keep playing the rest of the season. Yeah. The, N- the NBA, I, I mean, uh, I'm not entirely sure what their full schedule is with that. Um but just strictly on a competitive standpoint, and you, you ask any NBA fan uh, what's really going to happen, and if you even look at the standings, I mean, uh, with the whole Mets situation, I mean, baseball back then you only had, what, like six teams make into the playoffs or whatever? Yeah, uh, back then it was just... So, I mean, that's like a very select few, and you can get some like decent teams to like get up there, the NBA, there's just, after that sixth seed, it's, it's just all trash teams. Uh, or up and, it, there, There's just no need to have some of those ninth and tenth seeds trying to sneak into the playoffs at that point. If, it's just frustrating, yeah. uh, the NBA, because of the lack of competition with all these super teams and what you can do. But with Piazza's home run... Baseball doesn't have as many points as compared to the NBA. And yeah, while you can have like a really good dunk or like a great game where you just explode for 55 points and just lead the team, I've seen those great basketball games before and they're a great thing to watch. Um, but the, this is America. Seeing that home run versus a dunk, I want to see an emotional home run every time. Uh, what, about a, just... what about a uh, walk-off, uh, walk-off three-pointer? That's always good too, um, yeah. but you could have that, that. You could have that, um, but I just don't think it'll be as impactful. Yeah. Uh, just because there's so many points that happen in an NBA game, yeah. um, that's just my only knock off on that. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll see. Now, uh, I have one last thing before we wrap it up. Do you know mm-hmm. there's actually sports going on right now? Is there? Yes. While and while the United States is shut down. The um, the uh, FIFA is is uh, quarantined, and Korea and Japan are on pause. The uh, Taiwanese baseball league on April 11th started on time for hmm. opening day. Now they don't have any fans in the in the stand, obviously because of the situation. But they're on time. They haven't canceled a single regular season game, and they're playing right now without. About problems. I mean, there's, there is one thing that you need to, to uh, get accustomed to to mimic the, uh, the uh, nature and the energy that's normally in the stadiums. Uh, the five teams. There's only five in the, uh, in the league. There, have, uh, have they have robot fans? Yes, yes, I did see that. Yes. Um, yeah, they that... have robot fans who will cheat. Who will cheer and wave while these while these players uh, play in an otherwise empty stadium? Now I have to and ask you. I find you, it though, hilarious. <laughs> I, I know you've played your fair share of MLB The Show games. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
and I'm sure you've looked at people do sims and whatnot, but are these robotic fans going to be any better than the fans in the stands of those video games? Because, I mean, you get some great graphics on the players, but the fans, a little lacking. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure if it's like the uh, audio animatronics in Disney, where it's like the, where they have like the computer generated fa eyes and face, but the rest of it is just the normal uh, robot. But uh, I'm, know I'm looking for some be some sponsorships. Like if they, if Budweiser or anything is not getting in on this, they are missing an opportunity. No, you know what they should do. Uh, I mean, not that the, it wouldn't really help the players as much. But they should just get some green material um, or blue material, whatever it is, and just like put it all in the seats, block it off, and then just use a green screen sort of technology. Oh, just, just green put, screen. Yeah, green screen the fans like, in for like at yeah. home. Or one, or one, one day they're playing on Mars. Yeah, <laughs> it's like he hit this one so far, so high. Joey Gallo has hit it out of the stratosphere, and it is on its way to. The next galaxy. Yeah. Uh. Make it, make it so. Uh, what I, do, uh. but yeah, well, that that's one thing you that maybe some of the uh, teams when they go back maybe they, they do that just to get something in and maybe that'll be the next great cut for material for MLB. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, there's lots of potentials to what yeah. you can do. Um, the one thing I'm back to just to go back right before we close this off here uh -huh. the whole grapefruit cactus league thing um just to sort of contain them all they'd all be stuck at the hotels and only going from the hotels to the stadiums and back right that's just that's going to be a lot of sort of traveling and uh lots of hard pressed time and commitment just it's, to get everyone to stay put and do what they need to do yeah. and it's going to be weird but i think ev just about every proposal going out there has yeah. has that into it where they contain all their players in a bubble for like the next three four months now as i said it does appear that the curve is starting to go downward so maybe that accelerates yeah. some of the timeline like, i think what they can do but we'll is see. If, the, if as this curve is now going down uh, the slope, uh, get that math term in there. Um, <laughs> the <pow> mitochondria <laughs> is the powerhouse of this. No, um, that's not math. <laughs> um, so as this slope now is decreasing, uh, maybe you can start off with the grapefruit cactus league, but like just in the locations, but modify the actual sort of league just so that you like sort of play those teams in that area uh and then as the month goes by and the the country opens up a little bit more then maybe you can return to other sites and then continue playing in regular american national league but just having the beginning of the season uh reshuffle the order of the games to just be in that grapefruit or cactus league section of Maybe. the country if, if, if you if you're trying to if you see what i'm trying to get. yeah i see what and um, remember regardless of what proposal they do need a a, a three four week spring training to just to yes. get back into shape they yeah. basically they've already been uh if this was an off season this is december right now so yeah i mean yeah. The, the nba has already said that they'd need 25 days to uh get everybody back up to speed um, I mean, Jason Tatum of the Celtics has proclaimed that uh, he hasn't touched a basketball since the Celtics' last game. Like, a and month most and, a half and ago, most so. pitchers are they need to get worked back up again. Oh yeah, yeah. So. But again, we'll we'll see whether next episode is next week or two weeks after. That'll be determined yeah. by what news comes out. Yep. But all right, Joe. A pleasure talking to you again. We'll. Uh, uh, we'll keep washing our hands, not each other's hands, because that's not social distancing. But but I well, thought sharing was caring, no? Six feet apart. Six feet uh, apart. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'll catch you later, Greg. Adios.